My name is Emily Weber, a machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services, and today we're going to talk about debugger. This is your deep dive. So you might be saying to yourself, you know, geez, my, uh, my machine learning model is actually taking a really long time to train. And th this, is, this is not uncommon, right? There are, there are massive data sets out there. Um, there are very interesting, very complex algorithms, and we'd love to be able to, to take advantage of those. Um, but if our model is training for days, which can happen, uh, how do we know if there are any problems with it? And then how do we diagnose those problems and then take action on them uh, to, to slow them down? And so the answer there uh, is Amazon SageMaker Debugger. So quick recap on training jobs to really level set on, on the debugger. So first off, we're going to start with our, our notebook instances or studio. In, in this case, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, so let's, let's say we're on a notebook instance just for the sake of argument. Got our EC2 instance here. We're sitting on an EBS volume. Uh, we've got our IPython notebook open and we're going to call model.fit. When we do that, remember SageMaker is going to shoot our data out to S3 right? Or another data store, actually. You've got, you've got three options there, but for the sake of argument, let's pick S3. Uh, and then SageMaker is going to drop our data onto uh, a new cluster. And remember, this EC2 instance or collection of EC2 instances is going to be dedicated to your model and to your model alone. And so you can scale this out, right? You can easily upgrade those EC2 instances. You can take advantage of some GPUs. You can get your hands on those, those very beefy uh, CNM series instances. Those are, those are massive machines that you can easily uh, get your hands on. Um, or you can scale those out, right? So you can um, have more EC2 instances. You can just tack those on um, until you've got your, your training job adequately uh, computed, if you will, or, or um, with enough infrastructure there. Uh, that's going to be wrapped in a Docker container, right? You'll have uh, Docker images on, on both of those. Uh, and then essentially, this job is going to run right? Your model is going to train. And this is the case whether you are uh, using a built-in algorithm or bringing your own. Uh, and then we're going to write that trained model back to S3. And so after that training job is finished, the model artifact, as it's called, goes back in S3. So that's a training job. And we're going to, we're going to have our, our image in, in, EC, in ECR there. So that's a training job. So where does the debugger come in? So SageMaker debugger is going to be adding hooks to our training job. And so let's start on our notebook instance down here or studio. So the first thing we want to do is add what's called a debugging hook. And we're going to step through examples to see how to do this. But essentially, we're just defining an object. And we're going to add that object to our training job. So we're just going to add that directly to our estimator. And then uh, when our training job comes online and starts to actually train our model, that hook is going to be listening to events. And it's actually recording tensors. So it's going to be listening to specific events in that training job based on what you set up. Um, and then it's going to be recording those tensors and dropping those back in S3 eventually. And then uh, debugger is going to be applying rules to those tensors. So once, th so those tensors are going to land back in S3, right? Those tensors are going to make their way back to S3. And then an yet another EC2 instance here um, that's also pulling an image from ECR uh, is going to grab those tensors and then it's going to apply the rules to those tensors to understand where those rules are uh, valid, which is to say when our training job isn't behaving appropriately. And what's what's exciting is that there are actually 15 built-in rules. Um, there is a lot of sophistication in the debugger rules. I highly recommend spending some time digging through those. They are very interesting. And so we'll we'll run this this job here uh, to to analyze those rules. 
and then that's going to go back to us three we'll drop those tensors back to our studio instance or our notebook instance and then we're going to analyze those tensors uh, with visualization and then with alerts and so there's really a four-step process here we're adding those hooks um, those hooks are going to be listening to the events and it's going to record tensors on our training job. Um, and then we've got this separate instance that's going to spin up over here using an image from ECR to apply those rules, drop that back in S3, and then we're going to visualize those. And so that at a high level is how SageMaker Debugger works. Let's check it out. All right. Uh, so I'm still in studio. Right, and just to, to orient you, let's open up this, this little file tab here. So I'll open this up so you can see the, the full path. Yeah. So this is the home directory, right? This is These are all the projects that I'm working on in this domain. Uh, and then we have SageMaker examples, right? That's the Git clone from, uh, from GitHub. And then we're gonna cruise down here and select SageMaker debugger. Give that guy a double click. Uh, and so here are just some of the examples, right? You can analyze tensors, tensor plot. That's the one we're going to be walking through. Um, you can get specific real-time analysis, real-time analysis, spot training, a custom container using PyTorch, TensorFlow taking an action based on a rule, TensorFlow using a built-in rule, uh, Keras custom rule, and then actually boost both for built-in rules and real-time analysis. And so let's cruise over and we're going to select tensor plot. So a few dependencies that we're going to need to add. Um, if you are doing this at home, uh, there are a few of these that you're going to want to add. So make sure that you're adding uh, pip install on SageMaker in addition to the AWS CLI, uh, and then this NB format double equals 4.2.0. So make sure you've got those. And then your notebook should come with these two uh, by default, but make sure you've got those anyway. So we've got five installs there. All right, and then once you've got those done, we can keep moving. All right. So this is all we're doing here. <laughs> it's actually not too bad on the on the front part. So uh, we're gonna import this operating OS, right? We've got SageMaker and then SageMaker.debugger. So this is new, right? This is a new aspect of the SageMaker SDK is, is this debugger component. So that's getting added in here. And then .mxnet, we're gonna import the, the mxnet uh, framework so we can bring an estimator or bring our script for the estimator. We've got our SageMaker session. Entry point script is right here. And so this script is gonna, again, come with the example. And so we can walk through that script um, at your leisure. And then hyperparameters, okay, that's our batch size. Base job name, MNIST tensor plot. All right, uh, so this is pointing to our default bucket. Uh, pretty straightforward, location in the bucket, there we go. S3 bucket for tensors. So this is where those tensors are gonna be landed in S3 once they complete from the training job. And then this is our estimator. So that execution role in SageMaker, base job name, uh, train instance count, remember, so that's our cluster config. So we're sitting on one uh, M4XL here entry point script, framework version. So here's the version of MXNet that we're working with right now. Train max runtime. Um, so you can make sure that you're not running uh, too much longer than you'd prefer to. SageMaker session, Python 3. So debugger hook config. Let's take a look at this. So we're creating this debugger hook config object and that takes a couple arguments. It takes that S3 bucket, remember, um, so the, the S3 location where we're going to be landing those tensors after they complete, and then this collection config that has all of our tensors in this case, and it's including this regex, so everything that looks like that, uh, and then it's going to be saving steps one, two, and three. And there we go. Then we call estimator.fit. So this is, again, turning on a new training job. 
This is actually running on EC2 here, not on Studio. And that's up. And that trained in a whopping 73 seconds. Job completed, reported success. All right, and then we're gonna wanna download those tensors actually. So remember they landed in S3. We're gonna download them. And then we're gonna visualize them. So this is the example visualization that comes with the notebook actually. So when you open this on Studio, you will see this, this uh, video by yourself. Uh, but if you step through this example, you will also get your own. So in this case, uh, we're going to set up what's called a tensor plot. And then here we go. So this was our model. Check this out. So this is how we can uh, actually inspect the content of our models, right? We can, we can move this around. Uh, we can drill in, uh, we can, uh, you know, rotate these. Um, and this is, this is just a really valuable asset. I mean, there are so many times, you know, when we're working with clients and um, what they really want is more transparency to really understand what's going on in the model while we're training. Um, and so the, the visualization is, is one way to provide that, right? We can clearly see that the, um, the zero image here is being passed in. It's being rendered by these convolutional layers here, uh, first in larger ones and then in smaller, uh, no doubt, fully connected layers. And then we have some, um, you know, larger max pooling layers. And then finally, uh, the, the predicted class, which comes up here. Uh, and so this again just makes it, it easy to, to collaborate with, with other folks. Um, it's also just really nice. I mean, you know, so many times in our space we get stuck in, in either analyzing data or just writing code. And so it's really nice to, to have a, um, a visualization be generated for us um, that is actually about the nature of the deep learning model. So there we go. So a couple things to keep in mind. Um, so the example that we looked at, again, primarily focused on tensor plot visualization. Um, but again, there are 15 rules that you can apply, um, whether that's dead ReLU, exploding tensors, poor weight initialization, saturated activation, vanishing gradients, etc., etc., etc. There's there's a lot you can play with there, so strongly recommend that. Um, but also keep in mind that you can bring your own rules. Um, so if from you know your background and your training, if there's some you know key aspect in the neural network that you want to make sure is is constant or is true um, while your model is training uh, then just go ahead and add it right you can you can just add that to your own debugger um, we, we have this concept of no change needed and so uh, when you're bringing a script so when you're in script mode um, and when you're using the built-in SageMaker algorithms um, you actually don't need to modify your scripts to use debugger, right? You can you can actually just add a debugger hook config um, and start to uh, start to add debugger to those jobs straight away. Uh, and then lastly is, is that visualization, right? Um, I mean, it's it's been said that 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 a picture is worth a thousand words. That is so true. That is so true in data analysis. That is true in technology. Uh, strongly encourage folks to to take advantage of the viz. And with that, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Emily Weber, Machine Learning Specialist at AWS. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day.